Hi everyone, Radhe Radhe. So I had shot this video, it was a 7 plus video and a minute video and I lost it so I have to shoot this again. Okay, um, so we're doing uh, chapter 9 verse 31 in this video and this is another one of those things that are slightly triggering. There are some things that are very good um, in um, in this verse which are wonderful and then there is something that is slightly triggering so let me tell you it's a continuation of verse uh, 9.30 and uh, let me just tell you what that is just for flow 9.30 is uh, Bhagwan Sri Krishna saying that anybody who uh, is a devotee even if they uh, perform abominable actions they are considered saintly sadhu eva sadhu is a saint so 9.31 now, okay, I'll, <laughs> let's sing the verse together first and then we can go into the meaning. Okay. Kshipram bhavati dharmatma shashva chantim nigachati kaunteya pratijani name bhaktah pranashyati so the continuation now is he quickly becomes righteous and attains lasting peace. That's the first part. And then the second part is, O son of Kunti, O Arjun, declare it boldly that my devotee never per perishes. Okay. So uh, perishes is pranashyanti and bhaktaha, devotee. He is using the word bhaktaha for a devotee here. Now um, what uh, Prabhupada here says, now there is a confusion here again, seventh chapter. He says, one who is engaged in mischievous activities cannot become a devotee of the Lord. So this part is a little confusing for me. I haven't understood it. One who is not a devotee of the Lord has no good qualifications. How then can a person engaged in abominable activities, either by accident or by intention, be a pure devotee? Right? So... Um, so in seventh chapter he's saying that uh, that person cannot be a who person who is engaged in these things cannot become a devotee. So I don't understand that. So that's one part. There are two parts that are that one part I don't understand. One part that's triggering, and then some parts that are really amazing in this. Um, so he's saying how to become a pure a devotee is engage in nine kinds of devotional activities. I don't know. I don't remember them offhand. But uh, chanting of the Hare Krishna Maha Mantra, um, continuously thinking of the Supreme Lord, and uh, and doing these nine activities, all kinds of things we can do to become a devotee of the Lord. Okay. So this this is uh, this uh, thing. Now let's go into a little bit uh, more uh, understanding. So here he's saying oil stains on a cloth cannot be removed by water no matter how much we try. This is from Bhakti Shashtak verse 35. Similarly, okay, truthfulness, non-violence and other virtuous qualities cannot be acquired without engaging in devotion to Lord. Right. So the process of becoming virtuous, like truth, serving others, being free from anger. Why are we not able to put them down and how can we put them down? And that is by engaging in devotion to God. So what that means is all of these good qualities that we have, these truthfulness, uh, nonviolence, uh, all of that, speak, like, uh, you know, being free from anger, all of that, they come from God. They actually come from God. So when we are starting to become devotees and when we're surrender surrendering to Bhagavan Sri Krishna and we're saying, please, please, please help me remove these anarthas or these faults or these these things that are covering the purity of my soul, um, then we then by Bhagavan Sri Krishna's mercy, we are able to remove them from our. So any of these good qualities come from God. So that part is making a little bit of sense that yes, all of these good qualities are coming from God anyways. So when we engage in devotion to God, then it's just a matter of time. These things will be removed. These things will be go gone eventually, right? Um, so uh, okay, so that that's one part that uh, why, you know, um, why, okay, so I'll get to the, let's do the good things first. So there are a few, two good things here, amazing things. He does not say the jnani will not be lost. So Bhagavad Gita is divided into four, uh, he talks about four different kinds of yogas. The jnani yoga, which is the impersonal Brahman, we go to the, we merge with the Brahman after that. The um, karma yoga, which is the first six chapters, uh, pretty much. The Ashtang Yoga, which is also covered in the first, mixed through the first six chapters. And then the Bhakti Yoga. 
these are the four kinds of yogs so many places in the gita bhagwan says um, yog and it's very confusing it's like what do you mean there's so many different kinds of yogs it's so open to interpretation can you be clear <laughs> but here he is very clear he is saying bhaktas he is saying bhakta will never perish perish uh, pranashanti bhakta he is saying right will never perish so he is talking he is not saying the gyani gyani will not perish he is not saying the karmi is will not uh, perish he is saying the bhaktas will not perish so that's very very beautiful very clear that this is he is not talking about impersonalists he is not talking about ashtang yogis he is not talking about karm yogis he is talking purely about bhakti yogi now that the next part which is amazing is why does bhagwan shri krishna ask arjun to make this statement instead of saying it himself he is saying o oh arjun declare it boldly that no devotee of mine is ever lost why arjun and that is because he can break his own vows but he does not break the vows of his devotees so that's the story in the mahabharat where bhishma pitama had made this vow i am going to either kill arjun by the end of the next day or i am going to make shri krishna pick up arms so um bhagwan shri krishna had to pick up arms he picked up the uh, wheel of the chariot in order to <laughs> um protect arjun so he wanted so bhishma did uh, bhishma wanted to test bhagwan will he do that will he do that to protect arjun <laughs> his devotees um so yeah so bhagwan shri krishna is saying that if you declare it arjun then that will be even more powerful than me declaring it because i may break my own vows but i will not break my devotees vow so you declare it so it's so powerful it makes it even more powerful and so sweet that he's uh, saying i'm giving you more power than i'm than i'm taking myself and so you declare it boldly this whole verse is very nice in that way very very good okay so now what is triggering me is this part that's not written in this verse um so the verse itself is okay this is written in the purport in the translation of prabhupad so uh, he's saying that one who is not a devotee has no good qualifications whatsoever he's even adding whatsoever in it and he says it again here um one who is uh, have no good qualification no that's a different thing so that part that he's who's a uh, not a devotee has no good qualifications so that part is a little triggering for me because i know i was an atheist right and i had lots of lots of atheist friends and everybody was very loving we believed in love i mean love comes from god and we didn't know at that time or i didn't know at that time that love is god if i'm be saying i believe in love then i'm saying i believe in god but i was saying i believe in human love but it comes from god so but they everybody was really good you know people around me were amazing really giving people really good people and i remember when i was uh, very young like i don't know 14 16 maybe something like that i said the only good thing about me is that i want to be good i remember saying that to a friend and that is it i mean people atheists as well they want to be good it doesn't mean that they don't want to be good right so how can that be true that one who is not a devotee has no good qualifications whatsoever that too right i'd i'd learned these uh, i'd uh, listen to these kinds of things in classes recently as well and those triggered me as well i was like i'm having trouble with that concept i don't understand because bhagwan shri krishna helped me so much i mean he was with me throughout i did he was with me every step of the way my entire life has been a preparation for me to come to here to come to krishna consciousness to come uh, to believing in god and to come to this faith that i have right now that god exists and god is good and god is loving i mean i have a lot of questions even around that because he has done some unloving things i'm like how can you do something like but i have faith in god right because i believe that whatever love is in me is coming from god whatever love is in good people around me is coming from god so if good people exist and if love exists then god exists and pure god pure loving god exists so all of this has come because bhagwan shri krishna has helped uh, has been with me like he has not left me at all he is never he is not he is continuously held my hand like he's continuously held my hand and and pulled me up and pulled me towards him and built slowly building my attachment towards him and, um so yeah i that part i don't understand which is not a part of the verse okay so yeah that's it for this verse the next verse is 932 which is my dreaded verse please 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 uh, give me strength please help me <laughs> dear devotees give me strength and i will pray to bhagwan shri krishna also to yeah 
okay um thank you wish you all a very a day filled with lots and lots of spiritual growth radhe radhe